Hello, everybody. Welcome to Nintendo Power Block here on Boss Push Network. I'm your host, and I'm excited, Eddie B. Joining me is Bossman himself, the one, the only, Mr. Corey Deary. Hello. Hi, Ed. Hi. It's, it's late. just us two. <laughs> it really is late. Uh, it, everybody, it's just an episode of me and Corey. Uh, and we got some great topics good show and tell and definitely snack tendo uh but before we get on to that Corey, yeah how was your weekend uh it was good uh we had my daughter's birthday party this weekend so we had a lot of cake and a lot of food and a lot of presents and a lot of <laughs> a lot of disney princesses and bluey and all that good stuff and uh yeah that's that was my weekend ed how was your weekend uh, well, my weekend was, uh, it was, it was good, I, I would say, um, that, that's you know, not convincing. Just, I mean, because of working, getting ready for inventory at my job, it was, um, it was good, it was good, I, you know, uh, interacting with you, talking about Death's Door, um, got to go see Grayson and his boyfriend, uh, actually got to meet him, not so, uh, which would also play a part of Snack Tendo. Um, got to meet them in, in the city. Uh, had a great time. Lovely. Uh, we actually ate outside uh, and we went to a uh, Cuban place for food. Uh, and I got to uh, know his, boy, his boyfriend or his partner, as he's called. And um, we was talking and we we had a discussion about you know getting into like how we got into video games and stuff and you know he uh his boyfriend was telling me that you know he used to play a lot of jrpgs and the first thing he mentioned was yeah i started out with tales of symphonia i grabbed grayson <laughs> real quick and told him grayson can i marry him <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I was just like, uh, you come included. But I was just like, can we get married? <laughs> and yeah. we, we was literally talking. But also, um, I had my OLED with me and uh, got to let uh, his boy, uh, let both of them see it and got to let him play a little bit of the OLED. He's just like, oh, the screen is so pretty. Uh, and found out that uh, a birthday of his is coming up of uh, Grace's. So uh, I got to get in touch with the. Uh, with the uh, partner and see what we can arrange. Um, wow. But um, last but not least, um, so I was that Thursday, I was coming back. Uh, uh, went to Miss Fields, got some good chocolate chocolate uh, chip cookies. They didn't have the mini ones. I used to get, mm-hmm. a, used to get a bag of the mini ones, mm-hmm. but they only mm-hmm. had the big ones. Got to where I need to pay for my ticket, and the lady tells me my line is delayed because there was a fatal incident, a fatality. A train hit somebody coming to Chicago on my line, so the train was delayed. So I, but my the train that I was getting on was still running, so I was getting on it, but I had to stop because we had to wait. We had to wait till we get permission to get back. Right. Uh, and I was just like, uh, wait, what? And this is the first time that in that I've known of a fatality in, on my train, you know, in our train area. Because most of the fatalities that come with, with the trains, a lot of them are done in California. People just commit suicide. And I don't know if it was the same thing, but uh, I didn't get to see the body. I don't know if it's maybe reported or anything, but I was just like... Um. Hmm. Well, hmm. guess I'll just uh eat my Mrs. Phil cookies and play <laughs> my Switch. I'm just gonna eat everything. my cookies. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But like after that, it it was just pretty much you know working, getting some gaming done, uh, recording, talk the walk in. Man, just just having you know a, a normal a normal weekend this time because most some of my weekends uh they've been good but when certain people are have an attitude it just ruins the day for everybody and then i become 
the mother trying to fix everything. And I'm, I'm just like, uh, but this weekend was really good. Uh, and I, I, it was so fun hanging out with Grace and his boyfriend. Uh, and chatting it up. That's fun. Super yeah. fun. Yes. But we got some housekeeping. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, just, a just a few quick reminders. Uh, I'm not going to run through it again fully here, but just uh, just a few reminders that our ranking Nintendo series from standard definition is appearing on the Nintendo Power Block feed uh, for the next couple months uh, every other week. So I think this week is our Game Boy episode is going up on Friday. Uh, so you can check that out. Our NES one went up two Fridays ago, so you can check that out as well. Uh, it's part of standard definition, our retro nostalgia podcast. So if you want to check that out for more, uh, we are doing an MCU rewatch. We're doing a Disney animation watch and review. Uh, Ed Lamont and I started, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, ranking and review. So that's going to be starting in a week or two. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, really encourage you to go over and check out that show, uh, we also have a uh, power block expansion pass and the direct recap show appearing on this feed. Uh, so if you want to check out expansion pass, it comes out every Sunday. The direct recap show usually happens within a day of the latest direct. So uh, I think the last one was me and Stephanie uh, covered the partner showcase. So yes. you can check that out. <clears throat> Uh, Can I, I say one thing about special pass? This yeah. this upcoming spe- special pass, everybody, be ready for it because I yeah. think if this is the one that you mentioned about that Sunday game in November, and we had that discussion. <laughs> that that special pass episode is going to be hot. Dude. Yeah, uh, I mean we've recorded a few in advance, so uh, any new patron, any new patrons within the next week or two, <laughs> you might not hear your name. Uh, we kind of try to do that in bulk just be- for scheduling purposes. Uh, I'm going to have to start pre-recording the, uh, patrons and then do like monthly patrons, right? I'm going to have to probably mm-hmm. start doing that at some point. Uh, but yeah, spoiler casts are in the works. Our first one is going to be Death's Door. I think it's going to be me, Ed, and maybe Stephanie if she finishes it at some point. Uh, I'm still playing it. I'm on the last boss, but I am doing a, a few extracurricular things things that ed reminded me about uh last night so yeah death door is coming i think fire emblem warriors is still happening uh we're gonna try to do them periodically uh Mm -hmm. schedule permitting uh so heads up on that uh the boss rush network store our 300 episode 300 uh merch is still up for another week or two so please head over there if you haven't gotten it already please go over there and get something for that uh go to bossrush.net and click on the store icon in the menu it'll take you right to the uh the store page and lastly if you listen on itunes or spotify please leave us a five-star rating and review it really helps us out really helps with discoverability helps people find the show uh if you listen or watch on YouTube, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Both options help people find the show and help us grow. And we really want to continue doing that. So, yeah. Yes. Back to you, yes. Edward. All right. Um, well, Corey, do you want to, before we get into Sectendo, do you want to do any? Um, oh, I see the Patreon stuff. Okay. Never mind. We, we can save the Patreon stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll get there. Well, We'll get there. Yes. Well, everybody, it's time for Snack Tendo. And I'm going to start the Snack Tendo. Um, of course because, you are. <laughs> yes. Because, of course, I started off having the misfilled cookies and a Sprite. But um, when I went out with uh, uh, Grayson and his partner, we went out for Cuban food. And I had uh, La Cubana. Uh, or Cabana. I think I said it wrong. I already still said it wrong. Um, that but... sounds pretty wrong, Ed. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm a pasty white guy from Middle America, but uh, <laughs> sounds wrong. <laughs> yes, uh, but we. I had this uh, Cuban club sandwich, and man, Ooh. the the meat, the because it was like kind of ham, uh, roast beef, uh, 
and it, like, they had this uh, special sauce. It's mm-hmm. not chipotle sauce, but it was some kind of orange sauce to it, which was like it was sweet and spicy, and man, it was all like on a toasted bun. It it was cut right. Um, it had cheese and tomato, of course, on it, but um, with a pickle. Oh no, it had it. It had yeah. It had roasted chicken, um, ham. A little bit of roast beef, uh, a pickle, and some cheese, and like in the uh, tomato, with the orange sauce on it. Man, it was so good. I literally, I ate the whole thing. It was just like, uh, I'm ready for sleep. And then they had some rice and beans. Man, when I tell you, I was, I should have ordered another thing of rice and beans to go because it was so good. Uh, I mean, it was like a small portion of it. But I was just like, I, I really need. I, I should have got one to go. Uh, and of course, I just had like a coke uh, with me, um, and so that was good. I actually uh, went to my uh, nearest grocery store and brought this kind of roast beef and ham uh, sub sandwich, and I actually put the uh, chipotle sauce that I brought on it. Really, really good. But they didn't have no mayonnaise on it. And so, uh, I think um, by the time you guys see this, I'm actually going to go to Chick-fil-A, go get me a spicy chicken with the mayonnaise. I'm going to, since I got the sauce, I'll definitely probably just, they'll probably just throw in some more uh, Chick-fil-A sauce. I will make sure, Corey, that I put the mayonnaise on the top and the bottom, and the chipotle sauce on the top and the bottom, or the spicy chicken. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. And then you put the buns together, and then you yeah. swirl around and get full coverage. Full coverage. Yeah. Full. It's all about that full coverage, Ed. It's like a cell phone plan. Full coverage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, I I plan on doing that, and probably I definitely want to get a Oreo shakes. I like I like Chick Fil A's Oreo shakes that they have there. Hmm. Um. Uh. And so yeah. And then I got these um uh, sour strips right here. One is strawberry right here, and then one is pink lemonade, and they are so so good. Uh. I only had one of them, but I've been eating them. Uh. I'm about to like kind of eat them during the night as I do some more gaming. And stuff, but that's kind of been my snack tendo. Uh, I haven't like really, uh, I've been trying to look for new places to go to to go try some new foods and everything. And I think I'm probably gonna go into the city, uh, and find some places because there was a, there was a sushi place that I passed by that I think I'm gonna try their sushi and everything. Um, then probably text Grace and be like, "Where is the pokey place?" He told me that he, he uh, there is a ramen shop that he wants to take me to, uh, but it's like it's probably gonna be like late at night that we gotta go, like at six o'clock at night. So, um, Corey, while you're on vacation, uh, I may go up there on the Thursday. Be like, let's go get some, po- let's go get some ramen <laughs> and and everything. Well, that's so, fine. If you go get some so, ramen, that's fine. Yeah, I haven't had ramen in Chicago, so I, I can't wait. I'm excited. Yes, yeah, so uh, Chicago ramen. <laughs> exactly what they're known for. Uh, so, uh, but that's pretty much what uh, I've been snacking on. What about you, Corey? Uh, I've been... So, like I said, this weekend was our daughter's birthday party, so we cooked out. Uh, I had some... Uh, I had some, we had some kebabs, some chicken kebabs. So my wife marinated it in this Mediterranean dressing for like a day in the, like a a whole 24 hours in the refrigerator in this Mediterranean dressing stuff. And then we cut like green and yellow peppers and onions and cooked them on skewers, man. They were so good. I got to tell you, man, nothing beats a good kebab. I got to tell you. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then we had like sausages and hot dogs and burgers and stuff. I'm not like a, I had a a couple of the sausages, but like I'm not like a, not like a huge burger person. Uh, 
But yeah, man, the kebabs were super good. We had corn on the cob and just grilled vegetables and all kinds of chips and dips and all mm. kinds of delicious things. So uh, yeah, and then obviously we had some birthday cake because my daughter had to have birthday cake. And who doesn't like a good birthday cake? So uh, <sighs> chocolate cake wonder- with buttercream icing. Uh, uh, that's what the hacks. Yeah, it was an Encanto themed cake. So my daughter was super happy. Uh, my daughter dressed up as Mirabelle for her birthday, so that was also a really Aww. fun. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of all I snacked on, Ed. That was uh, it was a big weekend though. Gosh, dude, kebabs are so good. I'm kind of want one now. I'm kind of still hungry. I didn't really eat a lot for dinner, but <laughs> did you guys put with our group got uh, kebabs like on metal or on wood? Uh, they're just these metal rods that we put them on and cook them. Okay. And then we let, obviously we let them cook, uh, cool off. But like, I take, I take them off the skewer. I just eat it like they're grilled ve- vegetables and chicken. <laughs> okay. I'm not like yeah. sitting there eating it like, you know, like I'm not doing that. Nope. Nope. Man, I haven't. The last time I had a good kebab, I was in, in South Bay, Indiana with, uh, um, Larry, goodness, Larry, yeah, with Larry. What was I was to say William for, uh, with Larry, and I don't know if Larry's um, gonna appreciate that you forgot his name. <laughs> He'll get on me, uh, which I need to hit him up. I need to go see him. Um, and he took me to a place because he was, we were talking about. It. I'm like, dang, I want one. He's just like, I can take you go get some. So we went and got some. Um, he came back and cooked them, and man, um. I kind of wish, though, I, and I don't know if you do this, uh, Corey, but have you ever tried kebabs with rice on it? Like like the kebab is sitting on the rice? Yeah, I mean, that's sometimes that's how they're served anyway, is usually on some sort of fried rice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think I like it because the juice is falling onto the mm-hmm. rice. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like a good sauce. In yeah, it. they season the rice. And then you take like a... A lot of time, kebabs are served on fried rice, and they're served with a lime, and then you squeeze the lime over it. See, I've never seen that. Oh, man, dude. Fresh squeezed lime over anything just makes it <gasps> taste instantly better. Yeah, that is true. Gosh, dude. And lime makes a lot of things taste better. It's something about it. It brings the flavor out. I mean, it still has that lime tangy flavor. Yeah. But for something, for some reason, it just like it enhances the flavor mm-hmm. when you eat it. Yeah, um, it's very good. Quite, so. I love a good lime. Like that rice paper place I always talk about on this show. Uh, yes, the Indonesian fried rice that I get is always served served with a lime, and squeeze oh. it on there, and it's just oh, it's so good, it's so good. Mm, I okay, it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, I did have Chinese food. Uh, I was I, I was texting you, and, and and the question I put kind of on my Twitter was, uh, for anyone who drinks like pop and stuff, is Pepsi the good flavor to the drink when you're eating Chinese food? Um, because like a lot of places around here that does that does search uh, sell their Chinese food, they normally go with Pepsi. I I barely see any Coke. Uh, products, but uh, one of my Twitter friends was just like, "Yeah, I drink it with Coke, and that's the only time he actually drinks it." So I'm, I think I'm gonna try it again, um, probably later on in the week. Uh, get the same Chinese food, but get, uh, my place is right by a, a gas station, so I'll probably just pick a, a Coke there and try it out. So. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. I was talking, and then I was muted. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. So the the weird thing is, is like I don't drink pop. I just drink energy drinks and water. <laughs> That's like my entire t- <laughs> You know, it's just like what I drink. And probably I drink more of one than the other, and it's probably the opposite of what it should be. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but like I don't really drink pop, like. I had so I had a cup of Diet Coke at my daughter's birthday party because my parents like love Diet Coke, mm-hmm. and I had a cup because I'm like, I want something like that's not water with these kebabs, and it just like 
when you don't drink pop for a long time and then you go back to it, like you taste the syrup and the sugar and stuff, and it's just like, ugh. yeah, ugh. But also, like, I'm sure I would do the same thing if I stopped drinking energy drinks and then went back to them. <laughs> so, uh, whoops. Oh well. We're ready. That I gotta stay to be... hyped for so- for something. That is true. I still have my uh, mango monster. Uh, <laughs> That I was gonna drink Saturday night so I could play like Firewatch. <laughs> Dude, I got home, <laughs> put my drink. I had I didn't even open it. I put my bag down. I laid down on the bed, <laughs> disappeared into the darkness. I was that's gone. that's funny. A couple weeks ago, uh, I had um I had a monster out and I put it on the table and like my wife went to bed early and both my kids were in bed, and I sat on the couch and I put my monster there. And I was, like, all ready to play games. And then, like, I just kind of, like, I didn't lay down all the way, but I was kind of, like, leaning in the corner of the couch and, like, checking my phone for something. Uh-huh. And the next thing I know, it's, like, 3 o'clock in the morning because I had fallen asleep. And I was like, oh, dang it. <laughs> dang it. Uh-huh. The one time everybody's in bed early. <laughs> I, I do, like, the one time that you actually text me, like, at, like, 2 in the morning. You're just like, hi, Ed. I was just yeah. like, hi, Corey. And then I was just like... Wait a minute, <laughs> Two something. I'm yeah. just like, and I do. I was. I got up and was ready to have a conversation with you. We like, no, he has to go back to bed. Yeah, that's so, fine though. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. Well, everybody, it's time for playing with power. Corey, what have you been playing with power? Uh, so I haven't really been playing that much different. Um. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to really play through Death's Door and try to get it done. Uh, I'm trying to go for the weapons that I haven't found yet, and then I'm trying to upgrade the weapons that I do have, which I didn't know you could do until you told me. Uh, yeah, so, I, I I ran into that just by accident. I'm like, oh, and I'm the only one. Like I said, the only one that I don't have is the fire. I'm not trying to find that door. Hmm. Yeah, uh, so I've been just kind of like wandering around, and I've I finally upgraded my life bar to to five instead of four. Mm. Uh, that the third boss really gave me a hard time. Like I just like I don't know what it was, but I just could not figure it out <laughs> until I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna hit the boss twice, dive out of the way, and then when it rolls the rolly ball, I'm just going to dive out of the way of the rolly ball and then hope I don't get hit by the giant snowballs that are falling from the sky. <laughs> so uh, I, my strategy was after he came down, uh, like roll out with, when I rolled out the way and he was in the air, I loaded up my bomb. So when he came down, I threw the bomb at him. Oh, uh, yeah. See, I just I felt like I wasn't going to have enough time to charge the bomb by the time he like jumped again, you know. And so I just like. I just didn't use any of that stuff. I was just like sword slashing and dodging and sword slashing and dodging and then rolling away from him when he would roll at me. Uh, And yeah, so that's kind of how I did it. And then I like went into, you know, the final area where you're fighting. I think it's the second to last boss, like the, the gray crow. Yeah. It's the second to last. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I I mean, if I was patient enough, I could probably do it. I just was, like, super tired, and then you told me about all these extra things, and I was like, well, I should probably go do these things first. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, like, I love I love this game, but I'm ready to play something different because I've been playing this for, like, a month and a <laughs> half, and it's a 10-hour game, uh, which tells you how little time I have to play games because... Yeah, I, I literally... Uh, when I told you I went to the when I got to the third town, like that seaside town, mm-hmm. and I talked to the octopus and stuff, he was telling me all the secret places that I was missing. So when I was going there, I'm like, okay, bam, this is the life bar, this is the thing to find this, and uh, this is how I get this weapon. Mm. Like, I was just listening to him, but like, oh, okay, that's yeah. how I found some stuff. Yeah, so I mean, I found the like the bigger sword thing. But mm-hmm. I don't know how to get to it, so that's kind of like where I'm at now. I don't know how uh, to get to it. <laughs> there are some places that you have to go in. So uh, I don't know if you want me to take pictures and send it to you, so you can easily find it. I mean, you can if you your... want. Sure, I guess that would probably okay. help, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, because like when you when you get to it, 
um, like when you open up part of the door, you will be going to uh, the left at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could, because there is a green orb thing, I guess, to help extend your life. Mm-hmm. Um, and right next to it, you could, uh, there is a thing that you'll be using your uh, grappling hook to go over. And then it'll be a door that you go in and you, you'll go get the sword. Mm-hmm. So I could, I could take the pics for you and show you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever. It's fine. Uh, so yeah, I'm just, I, I want to be done with the game. I, I love it. I think it's an amazing game, but like, you know how you just feel like you've been playing a game a little bit too long and you just kind of want to finish it and be done with it. That's kind of where I'm at now. I'm just like, I want to be done and, uh, I want to move on to something else. Uh, specifically, (laughs) I want to finish Fire Emblem (laughs) and, uh, a couple other games I have on my list. So, yeah. uh, but other than that, I've also been playing Destiny 2 because I have not done anything on my season pass this season. <laughs> and uh, as, it, you know, I have a Destiny podcast and it's kind of hard to talk about Destiny when you haven't been playing Destiny. So I, I guess I should probably be doing that. Yeah. But anyways, uh, the next couple of weeks will be easy to kind of grind it out because it's Solstice and nobody likes Solstice. So... Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Ed? What are you playing? So, um, I've been playing Fire Emblems, Fire, Fire Emblems, Fire Emblem, uh, Warriors, uh, Three Hopes. Um, I'm past chapter four, so I'm still unlocking some stuff, uh, getting through that game. Um, uh, and like I'm still being taught some things about it so there's still some training um been doing some side missions in it to get some new materials to upgrade my weapon um and making my character stronger and i think i'm going to try to like have a set team but also be like okay i need to switch it up with these people uh, when i go into the training area so I, I could get stronger with that, so I'm I'm processing um or pro- not processing I'm progressing through that game, uh to get uh to uh, hurry up and beat it. I, it may take me a while, but that is the focus that I'm going to be doing. Um, I just beat Aliens Fire Team, uh Elite on Xbox. Um, I I beat it on casual. Um, I think I'm going to go back and do the normal difficulty because uh, right now I just need to upgrade my weapons and still part of my character um, before I switch classes and stuff. Um, and once again, I still have a connection issue sometimes when I'm playing with other characters. It it um, it sometimes kicks me out. I had to, at one point, had to restart the game because the third player who joined just wasn't playing with us. So we got to a point where we had started this area we had got into this fight and because he wasn't with us we couldn't progress the level so the other player messaged me be like i think we gotta quit the whole game because we couldn't get out so um uh that was that it didn't play like a little bit of ikaruga uh on the train and stuff so you um, and that's pretty <laughs> it's it's a it's a good time where to do i swear um but pretty much that's kind of what I've been playing on Switch. Uh, and I've been thinking about going, definitely going through some of my old games and just be like, I need to get this stuff off of my backlog. Uh, mm-hmm. And I've been doing that definitely with my Xbox and with my Switch. Um, dude, I literally just charged up my PS4 controller so I could get ready for a stray. But I'm like, man, I'm going to cut on my system, probably got to do some updates, and I need to get some games done off of that. Because I got a tons of stuff that's on that system that I'm like, you know what? Let me get rid of this bat log. Even though there are new games that, that are coming out that I'm getting this week uh, on other platforms, I just need to definitely get rid of. Because Xenoblade is next, next Friday. <laughs> yeah, next Friday. I think Live Alive is this week? It's this Friday. It's the 22nd. Okay. So, uh... Yeah, because I, I pre-ordered that at Best Buy, so I just got to go pick it up. Yeah, pre-ordering <laughs> stuff at Best Buy, by the way, super easy. <laughs> Dude, yeah. And if you, because I get like, I think I'm part of that rewards program still. And so I could stack 
like if I got the five dollars or ten dollars, I could stack them mm-hmm. and they'll drop the price down. And th- that's kind of how I like for Black Friday, I could do some of my orders ordering with that, and they'll go get my gas. I just go back, go and get it. And sometimes be like, uh, maybe I'll go and get some because it's always like I'm spending close to two fifty, three hundred dollars on gas, but I come home with like about fifteen some gas for like three whole different systems. Mm-hmm. And the Nintendo wants to be gone quickly, dude. I know that's why. Uh, I, that's why I pre-ordered Bayonetta as soon as it went up today. I was like, "Yeah, I mean that Trinity edition was actually up for a like, good forty-five minutes uh, at Best Buy. Mm. Uh, I didn't get it. I I don't have room and I don't have the capacity to. And like <laughs> Bayonetta is not exactly a game I care enough about to get a collector's edition when it's like nothing." really that interesting like there's no steel book right which is like right what most of these collector's editions come with like the metroid one and the xenoblade ones are the ones that i like think are super cool uh but like no steel book three reversible covers for the same game right and which is like okay whatever uh and an art book which is cool but it's not worth the 30 dollars <laughs> extra that you're paying for it you know so i was like eh. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all that I've been playing with uh, at this point in time. Uh, so, uh, with this time, everybody, we're going to get into some show and tell. Uh, Corey, did you want to start show and tell? Or? Yeah, because I got a lot, Ed. All right. All right. We're going to start. We're going to start with the 3DS, Ed. Ooh. For, for $9. Sushi Strikers. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know this game came out on Switch also, but the 3DS version is actually the definitive way to play this game. So anybody looking, uh, not just the touch, but it gives you a longer screen to play with. Uh, so there's that. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on to the Wii U, Ed. The Wii U, Ooh. not a great game, but a game that I hold near and dear to my heart on multiple different consoles well not a game but a franchise and i thought hey why not 007 legends on the wii u <laughs> yes with skyfall bonus levels included so uh yeah is that the activision version or ea no this is activision uh okay it's daniel craig and you play through like very specific moments in the in uh, from the movies, like across all of the movies, like Moonraker is in here, Goldfinger, Die Another Day, License to Kill, and then Skyfall is also in here. So there's that. Uh, I'm excited to play it, although I heard it's mediocre at best. All right, Ed, we're gonna move into the Switch Switch Show and Tell. Got all yes. these for super cheap. Okay, we got Splatoon Two. Came yes, in. Splatoon Two came in. Uh, as most people, what are you wrestling over there? What are you doing? Are you eating food? Stop it! <laughs> oh my gosh, it took you like three minutes to open that fortune cookie. <laughs> I'm gonna stab you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, most people know that, like, who have been listening to us for a while, like, I got rid of a lot of my physical games because I was afraid my kids were gonna eat <laughs> the cartridges. Uh, and now I regret that decision, so I'm trying to get them all back. Uh, so Splatoon 2 got this guy here. Another game I need to start. Shimigami Tensei 3 Nocturne. Yes! Because I got Shimigami Tensei 5 last week, so. Yes! You know. All right, Ed. I know you're going to get laugh at me because I told you I was not going to get this game because I have the first one. But Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. <laughs> yes. I got uh for the Tetris, not the Puyo Puyo. Uh was it 20, 20 or 15? <laughs> what? Was it 20 or 15? 20. Okay. Um I got Immortals Phoenix Rising. Yes. This was on sale for $12. So I said, why not? 
Oh, that's a good deal. I know. That game's super fun, too, by the way. If you're looking for to scratch that Breath of the Wild itch, that, that game is going to yeah. do it. And last but not least, Ed was uh, a jerk and sent me a copy of Bayonetta 2 <laughs> physically. So I will now own all three physically, thanks to Edward Varnell. Uh, so that's all I have for show and tell, Ed. I'm probably going to leave some of these sealed because I have them digitally as well, but, you know. Okay. Uh, so the one that I have is Amori. Um, this one is from uh, Fan Gamer. Uh, it's kind of like this very Japanese. They say it's kind of like Earthbound in a sense, but uh, it's a mature... RPG, JRPG, and it gets very dark later on in the game. Um, it just came out last week uh, digitally, um, but it also came, they also had announced that they were doing a physical version. And I didn't know Fan Gamer were doing physical versions in store because I got it at Best Buy. And I'm just like, oh, they they're releasing this game you know, day and date. So I decided to get it. I've been hearing good things about it. So um, I'm excited to play it. When I'll start it, I don't know. But I heard it's like, it's, it's a good uh, JRPG and it's kind of dark. So, uh, but that's pretty much um, all I have for show and tell. Because like last week, you know, I had the Monster Hunter stuff and everything. Um but that's pretty much just it. Uh, of course, everybody now know that I got live alive. Uh, I'll be getting that. Uh, but uh, maybe if probably if I go shopping or something, when I go pick up live alive and check some other games out, uh, if they got some good sales, I'll probably pick something up um, with it. Yeah, I. Uh, I mean, so what I'm tr- <laughs> what I'm starting to do is like really. Uh, curate my lists and stuff and Mm -hmm. really trying to you know get everything kind of (laughs) in order and because like i really want to have a good nintendo collection especially because like when we move and i eventually have like a not a smaller office but more of like a good setup where i can kind of display things and yeah you know i i want to be like (laughs) I don't want to say, like, I want to be the YouTuber that has the Nintendo collection <laughs> behind him. But, you know, like, I want to have, like, a cool, like, oh, my bookcases are set up. Here are my Switch games. Here are my Wii U games. Here are my Nintendo 64 games all complete in box, right? Like, I want to have these things on display. And I want to have, like, my Game Boy out. Like, you know, like, set up and displayed. And I don't know. I'm just kind of, like, I'm in this weird mood where, like, this, uh, I just want to have the things you know and then get rid of the things that i don't want <laughs> yeah um, i i need to find arms um physically. It's, that's it's relatively cheap you can usually find it for like 30 bucks yeah I, that's the one that i need i know i think that's another first party nintendo game that i'm missing uh i know big brain academy i need to buy also mm-hmm. um that one yeah. Uh, I think I yeah I have Mario Golf, uh, have Strikers. I think there's a I think there's one more Nintendo first party game that I need, but I definitely know that Arms and Big Brain I uh, I need to get uh, for it. Man, I uh, I mean I have a list from. I mean, I don't really care about NES or Super Nintendo or Game Boy. Like, I pretty much have the games that I care about on those consoles. Mm-hmm. Right? But, oh, geez, that's a, that's a big mosquito. That's weird. Uh, but, like, from Nintendo 64 on, I've kind of made a list of things that I would like to have, you know, and fi- at least find, like, my loose N64 games I would like to find the boxes for, like a Majora's, a nice Majora's Mask box. <laughs> Like I have You're the right. gold, I have the gold cartridge and I don't know where the box is. So That's a crazy. I know. Or like Smash Brothers, the original Smash Brothers, I have the box and the instruction manual, but I don't have the game and I don't know where it is. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like if you go through that, your parents' whole house, it's gonna be there. But I'm I like... have. Like that's the problem. I have. <laughs> 
twice. Oh, man. She, when you showed me that uh, Steel Battalion uh, controller, I was just like, I can probably have this. Yeah. And you made a pretty big, you made a, you made a good penny off of that controller. I did. Yeah, that was uh, that and the Resident Evil 4 controller, the GameCube controller, and... Uh, I don't know how I missed that one. Yeah, I just, you know, like, I don't, I don't care so much about the collector's edition things anymore as much as I like. So like what, what, and I know we need to move on, but like, I, I want to have like the physical game. And then if I like the game, I will buy like the first four figure statue of that, of said game, right? Like those not really nice Mm -hmm. breath of the wild statues of like Link and Zelda. And I think they just put out the second champion right like i would like to have those someday you know or like you know destiny is a game that i really love so i buy the grimoire books the really nice hardback grimoire books uh that are like 30 dollars a piece in the art books and they started putting out these really nice statues uh that are you know between 60 and 70 dollars a piece and so i've started collecting those and like those are the types of things that i want like sometimes i feel like the collector's edition stuff that comes with the games are kind of like the God of War collector's edition that just got announced, right? Like I feel like the first collector's edition was way nicer than the second one. You know? Yeah. I don't, people are are upset about this collector's edition. Yeah. I just, I just don't know if people care about Thor's hammer for God of War, right? Like I, I have the God of War collector's edition statue, right? For from the first game. And it's like, Mm -hmm. I think people care way more about that than, you know, Thor's hammer. Shout out to Nick from WASD and Beyond podcast. He's in our chat right now. Uh, check out Spawn, uh-huh. Spawn Camp, them and Diggity and Build Bros. Like a lot of good stuff going on over there. Shout out to them. Go check them yes. out. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I I've actually been thinking about getting rid of this God of War statue too. I just I don't I don't know, man. I just there's just a lot of stuff in my basement that I used to love Mm -hmm. and I just don't want anymore. Like the halo reach statue I have downstairs. Like I don't care about halo reach. I care about master chief, you know, and I have the $70 infinite statue that covers that. Right. And I have the halo three helmet. I don't need the reach statue. (laughs) Uh, Not to say that at one point I didn't care about it, but like I just, I just don't want it. Like I have two gears lancers downstairs, full size replica gears of war lancers. One is the gears of war two lancer. And then one is the gears three retro lancer. Like, yeah, I don't like at one point. Yes. I was planning on hanging those on a wall on display to have a game room. And (laughs) Nick in the chats, like everything I'm mentioning, he's like, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. (laughs) Uh, I mean, if you're serious, Nick, you can DM me offline. We'll, we'll chat about it. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, trust me. Shout out to Nick, like I you know. said. I, uh, I want to get him back yeah. on something. Oh, boss and shout, yeah, uh, shout out to uh, WSD and Beyond. They just celebrated 100 episodes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, shout out to you guys. Thank you for, you know, uh, great stream, by the way, also, Nick. Uh, but, you know, we just want to say uh, thank you for giving us all this good content i know uh great discussions and everything we talk about we... talk about two teams that belong together right diggity and wasd and beyond in there yes uh their other show is really good too the uh Real bros no the other oh, one uh, OB, uh, obs or obo I, OB. I like i only know it from the twitter handle <laughs> and then i listen to it but like I, I just know like the acronyms for these shows. Uh, but man, just yeah, I just uh, you know they're doing so many cool things over there. I love what they're doing. You know, I, I yes. we have a lot of friends that do a lot of cool things. But like, you know, they're they're some of the best. They're awesome. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we love you guys, uh, and you know we. <laughs> We're just happy for you guys. We still sh- we show our support for you guys, and we really wish objectively you the best. bad opinions podcast. I all, I 
wanted to call it OBO podcast. And I was like, but it has a name, but I only know it from the Twitter handle OBO. <laughs> and I said OBS and that's the recording. <laughs> and then like, you know, when you're listening to podcasts, like at least for me, like I skip through the intro, right? Like I uh-huh. just hit that 30 second button to get through the music and the intro and stuff. And then like, I, I was like, oh, well. Now I'm just listening to them talk, and I'm they're like kind of halfway through a sentence already, <laughs> well, and I'm like, okay, well I'll just listen from here. But Nick and Evan know that I don't skip like the hot fix uh, songs on Wednesday because I'm just like I I every time they have a hot fix, I gotta listen to the intro because I love their theme song. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but once again, everybody, shout out to them. Like you said, Corey, people go check out Smile Camp, uh, check out Diggity. Um, Bill Bros uh, and Beyond WSAD. Just wanna yeah. uh, throw that shout out to them. Yeah, I. Uh, but anyways, back to like the collecting and stuff. Like I have like <laughs> I have it. I have a Cole Infamous statue downstairs that is super cool, right? But like, I don't know. Now I kind of feel like a poser having it because I don't own a PlayStation right now. <laughs> yeah. So like, I have a Cole statue. I have a uh the uh. uh uh, Gal- I almost said Galatrad statue. A Galahad, uh, Galahad statue from the Order. Uh, I have, you know, the I have the Marcus Phoenix statue downstairs, which I- I'll keep the Marcus Phoenix statue. I love gears. I'm going to keep that. But like, mm. you know, there's just a lot that I just I, at one point I was like, man, I love this, but I just don't know where it fits in my life anymore. You know, especially because, like, I have all these Disney Infinity figures I have to display and all these Amiibo now that I just can't possibly <laughs> display all these other things. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Anyways, I just, I love, I used to love collecting, but now I'm, like, in a in a space where, like, I really need to think about if I'm going to get something big. Mm-hmm. I really have to commit to it, you know, because, like, there's a Destiny statue that's $200 that I really want, the Savathun statue. And then there's, <laughs> I won't ever get this, but the the fallen captain statue is four hundred dollars for Destiny, and I really want it because it's literally the first enemy you fight in the game, like the first major boss you fight, well, yeah, minor boss, I guess. Uh, in Destiny one, and I really want it, but it's four hundred dollars, and I'm like, oh, geez. Uh, but yeah, also I have like this whole huge thing of Pokemon cards downstairs of like the first, like the very first wave of pokemon cards that i'm just like man if i could just trade these for the games that i'm missing on gamecube and wii and wii u (laughs) like i will happily give those away if somebody would buy me the games that i'm missing (laughs) (laughs) and it's not i mean it's not really that much right like the i mean the most expensive games are obviously the the operation rainfall games like i have the last story Oh, that's the game that I need. I, I have the I have the box. I don't have the game. I'm like, where is the game? You know? And Pandora's Tower and the two Fire Emblem games and Twilight Princess for GameCube. Like, I just, I don't know where any of this stuff is. And it's really upsetting. And I would trade all of my Pokemon cards just to fill out those libraries. <laughs> Which is probably like a really good deal for whoever <laughs> wants to get those Pokemon <laughs> cards, but right. I digress. Anyway, said sorry, I went on like a really long tangent about collecting, and <laughs> now I'm just really sad because I'm missing half of my GameCube collection <laughs> and part of my Wii <laughs> collection. So, uh, well, it is what it is. Yeah, I went on such a you long still... tangent. Ed got a snack and started eating. Well, I'm done with my snacking. Mm. So, but um, Corey, it's time to uh, shout out some of our Patreon producers. So, do you want to go ahead and shout them out? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you want to support the Boss Rush Network directly, you can head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. For those who don't know what Patreon is, it is a monthly subscription service that allows you to directly support your favorite creators in return for some perks such as early access to podcasts and other things. Uh, we currently offer two tiers, our $1 a month tier, which grants you one week early access to the Boss Rush podcast, Nintendo Power Blocks Expansion Pass, and two weeks early access to Standard Definition, the Retro Nostalgia podcast, and Boss Rush After Dark. Uh, our second tier is our $5 tier, uh, which is our Patreon producer tier. That means you get 
all the early access uh, to the podcast, as well as your name shouted out during this segment. Uh, Ed, good news. We have a new Patreon producer. Yes. Uh, So without further ado, I'm going to have to start pre-recording these, Ed. Without further ado, here are the Patreon producers for this episode of Nintendo Power Block. We have Quentin Jackson, Rebecca Jewell, Adriel Munger, my wife, Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilan. He still hasn't messaged me about his last name, so I'm assuming I'm saying it semi-correctly. And last but not least, our very own Celeste Roberts. I want to thank all of our Patreon producers. I want to thank all of our patrons, and I want to thank all of our free listeners. Remember, all of our content remains free. If you want to support us directly, we offer you a few perks to do so. Uh, Also, if you are a free listener and you listen on iTunes or Spotify, please give us a five-star rating. It really helps with discoverability. Uh, If you're listening on YouTube, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that thumbs up. It really helps as well. Pushes us into the algorithm. You know, like in Space Jam, A New Legacy. Al G. Rhythm. That's a real character, everybody. (laughs) That is true. I didn't see the movie, but that's who Don Cheadle plays is Al G. Rhythm. It really (laughs) upsets me. Oh, wow. Well, thank you, Corey, for that. Well, everybody, it's time for Fibby News! Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, Let me get get this timestamp real quick here. Yes, everybody, Femi News is our new segment. Uh, <laughs> and just to let everybody know where it came from, uh, it's kind of playing a take off Femicom. Uh, Femi Whoa, computer, I didn't so. know that. I'm yes. just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Ed, it's really late and I'm really tired. And I'm just like, I'm running on those, like, you know, when you get so tired that you, your energy level starts going back up, but in a slap happy way. <laughs> yeah that's where i'm at <laughs> it's gonna get wild yes well Corey, are you ready for family news <laughs> i am ed i well, am let's go. we have a lot of good stories this week ed uh so we kind of did a, an expansion pass on this uh which you'll hear in a week or two depending on if you're a patron or not um uh, Bayonetta 3 the highly anticipated sequel in platinum games popular stylized action series uh was announced in uh, announced in 2017 at the Game Awards. Finally, has a release date, and it's sooner than we anticipated. October 28th, 2022. Let me fix that. Uh, in an action-packed three and a half minute trailer, the date was revealed, as well as new playable characters, multiple bayonetas, controllable monsters, and more. Also announced was a pretty large special edition called the Trinity Masquerade Edition, which includes three reversible game covers, a 200-page art book, a physical edition of the game. The first game is also getting a limited physical release priced at a reasonable $30 at select retailers. I pre-ordered mine at Best Buy. It's still available right now as of the live recording of this episode. Mm -hmm. Go pre-order it because I'm assuming on day one you will not be able to get it. Uh... Bayonetta was originally released in 2009 on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, developed by Platinum Games and published by Sega. The surprise sequel was funded and published by Nintendo in 2014 for the Wii U and re-released for the Nintendo Switch in 2018. This third installment is also being funded and published by Nintendo, though any future entries are unknown as the IP is still held by Sega. Uh, There's a link to uh, the... uh, trailer in the show notes on our website so if you want to check that out you can uh we have a question about this ed and i added it here instead of in question block because i felt like it was better suited for here uh then we'll get into the conversation about bayonetta 3 grayson morales friend of show game rant guides writer uh do you think bayonetta 3 has the potential to make make a sales record for the series specifically will outset both bay uh both bayonetta games i think the potential is there since the switch has such a large install base and nintendo has been marketing bayonetta like a proper first party uh what are your thoughts on this ed 
Okay, so I think it does has a, a potential to do a big sales number. And um, now, Bay of One, you guys got people got to remember that it's on three consoles, and so it's not going to hit that number just yet. But it is it is a possibility. Um, as great as Bay of Two was, it only hit like about close to the five hundred thousand mark, I believe, in sales um, for that game. Uh, but I think with Bayonetta three, uh, I think it's got a chance to hit like a one, one or two million sales, because Nintendo's a lot of Nintendo's first party games have been million sellers on one platform. So I think this has a, a potential to outsell uh, at least two. Um, but if we're going for the first one, if we're combining all three. Unless that game gets a lot of nines and, you know, people recommend it and it gets into the game of the year conversation, it's a possibility of hitting two or three million. Um, so I, I think it has the potential to sell out two, but I don't think not the first one due to the fact that it's on multiple consoles. And plus, it's a PC version of the game also. Um, but yeah, I think with uh, with the Switch Darts, uh fan base, I think it has a chance to uh, sell big. And a lot of people miss Bayonetta 2 when it came out. Mm. Um, you know, and there are some people who are going to play this game on Switch. There was a question, or not a question, but a kind of a comment that someone was upset with Platinum uh, putting Bayonetta 3 on, uh, on Nintendo and not other consoles or anything. And I kind of responded that this this is due to a contract, you know, that Nintendo's funding everything and Sega owns all the publishing. Now, if Sega wants to publish it or, and, and stuff like that, they're going to, I think, in some kind of way, Sega's going to have to pay Nintendo back for the funding for this game because um, mm-hmm. they're the ones that funded to make the game happen. Sega didn't invest any money into it. So they, I think, Contract wise, they would have to do that. Wonderful one on one, and uh, uh, Fiddle Frame, uh, Black Waters of Black Maiden is a different story because Nintendo didn't fund those games. Um, they for for Fiddle Frame, N- Nintendo owns a portion of it of the Fiddle Frame series, um, but they don't fully own the series. So because Tecmo uh, had to publish it and everything um part of that money whatever they sold on xbox uh xbox one and ps4 uh part of that money would go to nintendo because they own part they own like like stock in it or like a percentage percentage of it one wonderful 101 i think they made a deal with nintendo to have that game published uh well i think i think what consoles. happened i think what happened with wonderful 101 is that now I I'm not a hundred percent sure, and I don't really feel like looking it up right now. So you're just gonna have to <laughs> believe me or not believe me or look it up later. But I think Nintendo. What happened was Nintendo actually owned the publishing rights to Wonderful 101, mm-hmm. and then kind of somehow like Platinum bought the rights back, or their publishing deal was over, or something. And the rights reverted back to Platinum, and that's why, you know, they kickstarted the game. For some reason, they kickstarted it, uh, which probably should have been our first sign that they were in trouble, that they couldn't even fund their own port. Uh, but, you know, they did that, and then it came out on everything, and, uh, you know, then the rest was history. But in terms of Bayonetta, uh, it's, it's Bayonetta 2 across Wii U and Switch actually sold around mm-hmm. 2 million units, which isn't terrible for that type okay. of game. It's actually pretty decent. The thing is, is that it totally bombed in Japan. It only sold 39,000 units in Japan, which is not great. Uh, I just looked that number up because I was, I was interested to see how much Bayonetta 2 sold. And I don't really know how much Bayonetta 1 sold because remember that for Switch and Wii U, the initial run of Bayonetta 2 came with a digital copy of Bayonetta 1. Yeah. Uh, I actually think the Wii U version came with a physical disc in the box. Uh, 
N- no, it was digital only. No, I have oh. no. I it was it, on Wii U. There was a disc for Bayonetta one. For the first print run. Yeah. Hmm. Man, I think so. I thought there was a digital code to it though. I think for the sec- I think what it was. The first run had a physical disc. The second run had a digital code, and then the third run didn't have it at all. Right, because the third one was just the disc itself uh, for Bayonetta 2. Because I remember when Bayonetta 2 first came out, I I still have that first edition. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I, I think you are right. I think I just probably need to go find it. Find my, uh, or, you know, when I get to my closet, I could put it out because it should be in my closet and stuff. Yeah, um, the uh, original version of Bayonetta 2 came with Bayonetta 1 physically okay yeah and actually the european version actually came in a bundle which each game got their own case which is actually pretty cool man try to buy a bayonetta 2 on wii u right now is like awful good good looking god bless yeah well it's not it's actually only on ebay right now you can buy a complete copy of bayonetta 2 for wii u with Bayonetta One for forty four ninety nine, which isn't terrible. It's actually way more expensive right now on Switch. I mean, you when you sent me this, you were lucky that you found it at that price because it's like upwards of eighty and ninety dollars now. Goodness, I man, I I remember because Bayonetta Two had that demo, and I still got the demo like <laughs> trials on my Switch. I'm on on, mm-hmm. on my uh, Wii U. The day I played that mug, I was just like, I need to pre-order this. I need to get this. But I was just at Toys R Us. I'm like, where am I going to pre-order for? I need to get it cheaper. <laughs> so I bought it literally at Toys R Us because I knew nobody else was going to play. Man, that weekend, that's all people talked about was bad now too. Outside of the controversy and stuff, mm-hmm. gameplay wise, people I mean, were just everybody loving lo- that game. Everybody loved Bayonetta too when it came to Wii U. Like it was I think IGN gave it a nine point five. Like there was it was getting nines and nine fives everywhere. Right. And yeah yeah and that's why it was weird that it didn't get game of the year when it came out. I mean every- I think I think the reason why is like A, a lot of other games came out that year and B, like mm-hmm. Bayonetta is still like as much as it got praised, it's still a niche game. And I just think not enough people owned a Wii U and not enough people played this very niche game on a very low selling console, especially yeah. in twenty fourteen when it came out. You know? But but plus other did, people but then let's see. Hold on. Oh go ahead. Hold on. I gotta look oh. this up. Uh but then the thing about it was that when Bayonetta came to Smash, people were going crazy. Yeah, but here, you know, the other games that came out that year for Wii U were Mario Kart 8, Smash yes. Brothers, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, Hyrule Warriors, right? So That's, those were the other first killer. party games. And, like, to be fair, like, everybody played Mario Kart, and Mario Kart 8 is the best Mario Kart, right? Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is arguably the best Donkey Kong Country game. Mm hmm smash brothers is smash right so like right even if you were only voting on nintendo games alone there's three right there captain captain toad came out so i mean i, I i'm just i were warriors was a surprise but i think it was just i think bayonetta 2 i think became a lot of people's game of the year I think it was more of a personal thing and i think like a lot of websites and other people for the popular kind of games uh bayonetta 2 wasn't in the de- was it in the conversation but people couldn't stop talking about bayonetta 2 even after the game of the well, year i think it's also worse. i think it was also a surprise because it was a um, look at bayonetta like it appeals to a very <laughs> specific audience yeah. it's a mature rated title nintendo went out and funded and published bayonetta which is a game about a <laughs> a witch lady who's body is covered in her own hair and when it comes off yeah you get, like literally the remember the opening shot on the airplane when they literally like go up her crotch and up the up through her cleavage and like around <laughs> yeah. like it's like a it is it is it is a we want you to know that bayonetta is sexy type of game that is the game right 
but because of her sexiness, she will kick you fifty feet, fifty thousand feet in the air, and do and will beat the mess out of you. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, I I agree with you, but like that's the character, and people were shocked, mm-hmm. and the fact that she came to Smash and very little was changed about her in Smash. This kid, for, this game for kids, basically, like. Yeah, I don't know. I I think Bayonetta 2, I think everybody was talking about Bayonetta 2 because A, Nintendo was publishing this game, which is way, yeah. like, I think the last time they published anything like that, like, remotely like that, was probably Eternal Darkness, right? At at this point. And, yes. Uh, B, like, you know, it was a great game on this console that nobody owned, but it was still an amazing game, and I think that's was why it, people were talking about it. Was it um, Nintendo's first time working with Platinum? Uh, with no, because Wonderful 101 came out the year before, and then they had no because they had Mad World on Wii, right? And but Nintendo didn't publish it though. No, but it was a Wii exclusive, and Nintendo kind of marketed it that way. I actually think Nintendo did publish Mad World. Maybe it no, was Sega. No, because it has Sega. It has Sega's. I, I think I'm. I'm thinking of Nintendo. Pay for Platinum to make a game for them, but uh, if Wonderful One Hundred One is, because I know, I know when they showed off the Wii U when they started uh, showing off like the system and stuff, and it was at E3. That was the exclusive that they showed that Bayonetta 2 was going to be exclusively on Wii U mm-hmm. that Nintendo was paying for it. So I thought that was when Nintendo was first working with Platinum because they've always they've been in good standards with Platinum. Now, uh, well, you know. Wonderful 101 came out before Bayonetta 2. So, I mean, okay. So, I mean, the Wii U is really the first kind of way that nintendo was directly working with them but i mean like Mm -hmm. they were still working with sega and platinum to kind of position mad world as an exclusive right so okay yeah anyways because then yeah because then platinum ended up helping them make zelda not zelda um i mean star fox and (laughs) and and then astral chain yeah um yeah (laughs) sorry i lost i lost the dock i accidentally (laughs) clicked on something else (laughs) To, 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 to get to my story there's a band and a one and then there's this one so we're gonna mark this time stamp that was my song did you like it yes it was great uh do you remember those adorable pikmin shorts on wii u ed yes well nintendo has purchased the cg production studio that created those nintendo has officially entered an agreement to acquire dynamo pictures credited with their work on death stranding Persona 5, Metroid Other M, and dozens of other projects. The company will be renamed Nintendo Pictures and will focus on, quote, development of visual content utilizing Nintendo IP, end quote, and the, quote, planning and production of visual content including CG animation, end quote. Uh, what do we expect f- uh, Nintendo to do with this acquisition? Uh, well, we had a pretty interesting discussion about cinematic uh, experiences on Nintendo. Mm-hmm. I think that was with Laron and Grayson last week, right? That was the docked mode last week. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. I've engaged with like cinematic, uh, like these big triple A games, like like narrative driven cinematic games. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think what we'll probably see is like, I bet we get more kind of shorts like the Pikmin ones. I would think maybe mm-hmm. I like the when they said that when they said that like my initial thought was well Kirby's pretty popular right now maybe they'll do like Kirby shorts or something uh yes but also I think maybe we're going to start seeing some pretty high pr- highly produced cutscenes in these games yeah I think even some trailers I think uh production rise for like their Nintendo Directs and stuff yeah, uh, we could see. Um, I know I was reading Nintendo Life, and they were talking about Elite Beat Agents. Uh-huh. Uh, oh yeah, because the they shows. had an article go up. Uh, somebody there was like, "I corrected a 15 year error and finally played Elite Beat Agents or something." Yeah, yeah. And then they found out that one of the songs, uh, 
the guy well, he was directing the movie and it said Nintendo Pictures ah. on it. And then to see that they na- renamed this company into the pictures. I'm like, I don't, I didn't even realize it until I watched the video. I'm like, oh, wow. Um, but I'm excited for this. I think, I think this is out of left field for Nintendo doing it. And I think it's good for Nintendo. This is a different kind of acquiring uh, this studio because now, yes. They could be making movies in shorts, but what happens with their next gen system? Like, if they, what if they, what if Nintendo do decide to pay another company who wants to be making these deeper storytelling kind of games and stuff? You know, um, they could borrow them to help them make some of their games Mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, You know, they could be making actually actual films. Like we may see a Legend of Zelda film now because they don't. They may not have to go to DreamWorks or Illumination well, or Sony or whatever. Well, to you me, know, this, this company. To, okay. to, to me, this this doesn't seem like a movie studio, right? This this seems more mm-hmm. along the lines of like shorts and CG animation and video games, right? It doesn't seem like. Yeah. It doesn't seem like they can be like, oh, well, we're going to cancel the Super Mario movie and have this studio make it, right? That doesn't seem like... Oh, no, no, no. You know. But, like, but maybe some of their future projects, they could do, like, an hour uh, kind of show thing, you know? Be like, hey, watch Donkey Kong Adventure. You know what would be, you know be really interesting, actually, now that you say, say that? Is if they expanded the expansion pack part of their offerings for nintendo switch online and said hey if you subscribe at this tier you get our you know feature shorts or whatever right like our pikmin Mm -hmm. shorts or our kirby shorts or donkey kong shorts right like i feel like i i feel like that's something they could do or like something to that extent i feel like that'd be really cool as a you know something to throw in there to make that fifty dollar tier more appealing because for some reason people think that N sixty four Sega Genesis Mario Kart DLC Animal Crossing DLC and you know whatever else they're offering isn't enough to pay fifty dollars a year. Uh, <laughs> that's a different discussion that I don't want to get into because I would go off. <laughs> but yeah i don't know that's that's interesting i'm kind of excited because it feels like it also feels like nintendo's finally building for the future and like yes you know with how nintendo switch online is working and then buying the studio and them kind of making acquisitions that make sense uh it just feels like nintendo is really kind of building something for the future and like whether it's the switch pro or switch two or whatever their next console is altogether like it feels like they're planning ahead for the first time instead of like playing catch up you know like i mean the switch the switch initially felt like hey we are we we're not playing catch up but we're not ahead of the game right we're like right where we need to be and now it feels like whatever's next they're planting the seeds early they're making the acquisitions that make sense and they're gonna actually maybe be one step ahead by the time their next console comes out they're business savvy and like like you said you know getting the right because i think the thing about it is because of switch being so successful and their revenue is it's just like in the billion it's <laughs> like they're making money off of these games in the system and they're investing they're taking that some of that money and being able to invest it into these companies and acquiring them because a they work they they work with Nintendo on projects so they know the work and b no one is even thinking about these companies you know so why not go ahead and acquire them and keep them like in business and just be like yeah okay yeah you guys are under us but this is a safety net you guys don't have to worry about anything for right now we know you guys know what we expect you know the quality that we could get out of you and we can help build this team and deliver better uh, quality in our products yeah so let's let's be smart about it let's not be in the in the point where where 
people are trying to make us compete with other stuff. No, or make it a big headline and don't produce anything. No, we have we know what we got out of you guys. We got a great relationship. So bam, why not buy you guys? Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Uh, it's always exciting when Nintendo finally, you know, looks like they're taking something seriously. Uh, but yeah. Our next story, Ed, Digital Extremes, the developer behind the popular free to play third person action title Warframe has announced their first new game in almost a decade at TennoCon, their, uh, Warframe conference. Uh, this game is called ironically soul frame a free-to-play fantasy game drawing inspiration from miyazaki and studio uh, ghibli specifically princess mononoke pushing the idea of industry meeting nature uh quote the conceit in soul frame is that the world itself is a little angry about what's been done to it and the grounds underneath tend to shift throughout the day so they're going to there's going to be proceduralism with the cave networks in the crevices so uh, and so on underneath the world, end quote. Uh, the game will uh, play opposite of Warframe's PvE gameplay style with a focus on melee with procedurally generated environments, uh, which was, you know, I was, you know, I, when Warframe came to Switch, I played it for a little bit, actually, uh, and mm-hmm. it was really fun, uh, but... I just didn't stick with it because remember when it first came out, there was that bug that was actually bricking switches for yeah. about two weeks. And uh, so I kind of stopped. I was actually really into it and then I stopped playing because I didn't want my switch to get bricked and then I never went back to it. Uh, Warframe was released in March of 2013. and has quietly evolved into one of the most successful games as a service outside of destiny and Fortnite. Um, Did you watch the trailer for this at all, Ed? No, I haven't. Uh, I have to look it up. I it's, haven't seen the trailer for it. It's interesting. It like if you wouldn't have told me this was, you know, their new kind of free to play offering, I would have told you this was probably like a a Soulsborne ripoff. Uh, just the way it looks, and you know, uh, but it looks really interesting. Uh, there's this giant kind of wolf creature that is kind of like sniffing around, and you know there's a girl in the trailer and stuff. It looks, mm. it looks interesting enough. I think that people who are interested in Warframe might give this a try. Uh, it's free to play just like Warframe. So maybe I'll check it out, but uh, I'm glad to see that the digital extremes is starting something new. Not that like Warframe is like, you know, whatever, but uh, it's cool that they're still interested in exploring new ideas af- even after the success of Warframe. Because we don't ever talk about Warframe on this show. I don't really know anybody who plays Warframe, but it is extremely popular. Yeah. So, any thoughts? No, not really. Um, Gosh, Ed, come on. I Give me I one nice it's... thought. It's, it's inspired by Princess Mononoke. That's one of your favorite movies, Ed. Yeah, it is, but... <laughs> Fine, we'll move on. <laughs> yeah, I think I think when I think when they mentioned that it has this like souls the souls kind of gameplay to it, I think I kind of just that's when I kind of lost interest and kind of real turned off because now it's just I think so many games want to use that genre and to me I feel like it's just crowded and overdone. So and then it's just like it takes me out that it does nothing for me. That's fair. It's time for the wrap-up, Ed. Uh, Pokemon Unite, the Pokemoba released a year ago, has uh, has seemed to be on quite on the quiet side. <laughs> wow, has seemed to be growing on quite the quiet side over the last few months in terms of additions. Wow, I'm just totally butchered that. Uh, but that has changed for its one-year anniversary as the game has added new Pokemon game modes and more. Over the next few months, Pokemon Unite will be getting Glaceon, uh, Buzzwool, and Tyranitar as new characters, uh, the Icy Glaceon Challenge, the Anniversary Cake Challenge, returning trainer support events, and what looks like a boss rush mode. Uh, Pokemon Unite has quiet, quietly been a huge hit for the Pokemon company, and it's great to see the support continue. 
Uh, any thoughts? I have never played Pokemon Unite. Um, I got it downloaded on my Switch and not have it started yet. Yeah. So I don't really have anything else to say either. I'm just But glad. that that's that's cool for new content. Yeah, for sure. Uh so the next story, uh Nintendo is teasing something massive with Lego for San Diego Comic Con. In a tweet this past Friday, Nintendo of America posted what's fourteen feet tall has six hundred and sixty three thousand nine hundred Lego bricks? Find out soon at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, today, Nintendo confirmed that the massive set is a mighty Bowser set. Uh, Bowser uh, moves. His eyes move. His eyebrows move. He has movable parts, all motorized. It actually looks really cool. Uh, last week, Nintendo and Lego announced the newest set in their line in a much smaller <laughs> mighty Bowser, which only has about 2,800 pieces. <laughs> That's the, still a lot. I know. Uh, the Super Mario Lego set has been extremely popular for the company, spanning many sets, characters, levels, and more. Even Bowser's Castle is a set, I think, is one. Uh, did you see this thing? Have you checked out this thing? I have, and it's huge. Gosh, dude, it's so But it's so, so big. cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's super cool. But what are you going to do with a 14-foot Bowser, dude? It won't even fit in my house. You know, I'd have to store it outside. <laughs> Uh, it's cool though. I, man, I always, I, every time I see a Mario Lego set, I want one and then I just never buy it. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know why I just, I don't know, probably cause my kids will eat the pieces or something. But no. <laughs> Anyways, Ed, uh, our last story here. Um, sorry, I'm marking the timestamp. Uh, finally, Nintendo has revealed, what the first wave of the Xenoblade content av- uh, available in uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 expansion pass is, and it's similar to that of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Wave 1 will be available on launch day, providing players with alternate outfits for the main cast of characters. A follow-up tweet also teased that, uh, what's coming in Wave 2, including a new hero and challenge, uh, and challenge battles, all coming before the end of the year. My show notes say tier should fix that nobody else is ever going to see this but it's fine uh for a full list of the dlc and the expansion pass uh nintendo life has a great breakdown that you can check out uh i linked it in the show notes on the website so you can check it out there xenoblade is coming up fast ed i feel like i feel like this game is like out (laughs) it's coming out next week and i feel like we haven't really been talking about this game that much uh in terms of, I mean, I know we're both kind of excited to try it out and play it and stuff. And I know there's a lot of people on boss rush who are excited for it, but like, I just feel like this game is quietly, it's, it's been quiet. I feel like around the internet about this game. And I guess I know why, because Xenoblade isn't exactly like the most popular Nintendo franchise, but like Mm -hmm. at the same time, I feel like this game looks incredible. Well, I think, because of the Bayonetta 3 news, that's kind of how I've taken the conversation. But I think with them ha- doing enough marketing for Zeta Blade Chronicles 3, a lot of people are just waiting to get the game and play it and everything. Yeah. Um, so I think they haven't really said too much about people haven't said, like they haven't been excited for the DLC because I think they're still just trying to wait to actually see what it's all about. But I think people are very excited to hop into this game and play and and see what it's all about. Yeah. So I think that's what the excitement has been. Um. I think I'm gonna wait for this DLC. I think I'm gonna wait to the when they get everything out. Um. Or if they're gonna do like, uh, like Torna, the Torna one that they did for well, the Bay Chronicles. Let's see. Or are they gonna do that too, like later on, or anything? Yeah. Well, the final DLC and the final DLC wave includes a new original story scenario, which is like I kind of. It, it's it's weird because there's two DLCs coming out this year and two next year, right? And mm-hmm. so, I'm just. I feel like I think this is what happened with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is like I played it and I know we were playing other things in January and February and stuff that of 2018 that year. But like I feel like I was really into it and then the DLC 
said that there was new story and new heroes coming. And I'm like, well, I want to wait till everything comes out because I want to play the game with everything in it. And yes. so why would I play like only, you know, only part of the game is here. I mean, it's 90% of the game, but like that extra 10% could make a lot of difference. And like you saw in Xenoblade mm-hmm. Chronicles 2, there was like Xenosaga crossovers, right? With Cosmos was in it. And uh, there, there was just a lot of other things in the game that like made it cooler. And I'm like, well, yeah, I want to wait for that. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be the same type of thing. I know there's a rumor, and I know that Dan has speculated on this a lot, where like Shulk and and Rex will be playable characters in this at some point. Uh. And so yeah, I don't know, man. I I want to play it because like I think it looks cool, and we'll definitely do. Uh, one of the things we kind of talked about doing is like giant bomb style quick look videos where like when a game comes out we'll play it for like a half hour an hour and try to get a feel for the game and then show you what it's about and talk about it uh and but you know it's i don't know man it's interesting (laughs) it's kind of an interesting thing here where i'm I'm just excited for it yeah i mean i'm excited for it too but like also like if i play the game and i beat it and these new heroes come out do you have to like play the game again to use them you know what i mean like it just doesn't yeah i don't know like okay yeah you might have some side quests left over that that spits you back out into the world to do but like i don't know man i just it's that it's that ocd thing where like i just want everything there so i can play the game that's there but in two years like what are we playing in two years you know (laughs) like will xenoblade even be in my mind at that point We'll probably be playing something else from uh, Monolith Soft. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe that's Xenoblade Xenos- Chronicles X, Xeno Saga Trilogy, <laughs> Xeno Gears uh, Remake. Right. I don't know. <laughs> ba- Bat and Kato's 2, finally. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, that new IP that they showed off that we talked about two and a half years ago and it's still not out. <laughs> right. Uh, anyways, that's. Uh, that's it for the news, though, Ed. I'm going to turn it back over to you for All an right, exciting right. Doctor Mode. It's time for Doctor Mode. Do we enjoy playing games outside of Nintendo? If you listen to Playing With Power or what we play throughout the show and other podcasts we have appeared on, you can hear our excitement, tone, and more when we game on other systems. Now... There's nothing new about how Corey and I have rant and wave about the Modern 2 Raider games. Play them. But there's, <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about playing outside a dedicated platform. For today's Doc Mode, we're going to have a we're going to have a Nintendo discussion about the importance of gaming outside Nintendo's world and what it does for us personally. We'll also discuss if there will come to a point where we uh there will I'm sorry about that. We'll also discuss if there will come to a point will we ever go back to a one console generation of gaming. Hmm. So, we are putting Nintendo (laughs) to the side for this discussion and talking about gaming like on Xbox, PC, if if we've done it, uh, and PlayStation. And just like, do we enjoy playing games on those platforms? Uh, I mean, I do. You know, like, I mean, so last week or maybe it was on an expansion pass or something, I kind of made it a point to say that I'm kind of recommitting myself to the one platform strategy unless I have games that I want to play on other platforms, right? Where, like, Nintendo Power Block is super important to both of us, right? And I think, yes, you know, in order to make a great Nintendo show, personally, I need to be committed to playing games on the Switch, which I have no problem with. I love the Switch. Uh, there are certain games that I know that I would rather play on another console, right? First-person mm-hmm. shooters, for example, Borderlands, Bioshock, Not that I, like, really like Bioshock all that much, but you know what I mean. Like, these types of fast-paced shooters, uh, first-person style games, uh, I would 
I guess I would throw Doom and Wolfenstein in there, although I think there is something really cool about the Switch versions of those games mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to something like a Borderlands or Crisis or, you know, we talked about Bright Memory Infinite coming to the Switch last week, uh, that there's something about a... F- first person shooter in particular that I would rather play on Xbox. And I know a lot of people would rather play those on PC, but, uh, you know, I play a lot of destiny destiny, obviously not available on the switch, but like, even if it was available, I mean, yeah, I would play it there because destiny offers cross play cross progression, uh, that kind of stuff. And I would use the switch for like, you know, grinding doing my weekly stuff or you know that kind of thing but like i prefer to play that on xbox because i can get up to 120 frames a second on that thing i can watch it in 4k and looks really good the animations are smooth on there uh it's an online game so like i would you know i connect with friends across you know that game and uh it's just i i bought an xbox series x to play destiny you know at that better resolution and frame rate and whatnot right uh i think i think i use the xbox as an alternative to the switch because there are like the the switch is great for first party experiences for indie experiences and uh you know there's a plethora of third party games on there that i like but for games that I want to play online or connect with friends or there's just straight up experiences that you can't get on the switch. Right. I mean, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of them, destiny outriders, halo gears of war Forza, like some, some of my favorite franchises just aren't available on the switch. And so tomb Raider is another example of games that we love that aren't available on the switch, which we'll talk about that later. Uh, you know, so like, experiences i can't get on the switch yeah i'm gonna play on another platform uh do i wish some of these games were on the switch sure you know i think i think tomb raider would be a really cool game to have on the go that trilogy uh especially because the first two are xbox 360 games Uh, right you know shadow the tomb raider you know that game got a series x port and that game looks awesome (laughs) that game looks really good on the xbox series x yeah with the rate like it has ray tracing and 60 frames a second and really great texture work the environments look amazing like lara looks amazing like that game those games just look fabulous like those games look awesome yeah so yeah i mean i think it's important to explore on other platforms, I do like. There's games on PlayStation that I absolutely love. Like Uncharted is a, is a franchise that I like, right? Like I love Indiana Jones, so why wouldn't I like Uncharted, right? It's, uh, you know, I mean, I know that early on, like I used to like kind of not crap on Uncharted, but like I wasn't as into it, you know. Especially when Uncharted Four came out, it was like, you know, it was too long. Obviously, the stuff with Amy Hennig that we still don't know what really happened, like, kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, it kind of feels like they forced her out. And Uncharted 4 just didn't really feel like an Uncharted game in terms of tone, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but those first three games and Lost Legacy are just some of, like, after I played Lost Legacy and I went back and played the original games, it, those like, those games are super fun. Uh, and this dialogue is awesome. And I just think uncharted is just a top tier fun action game. Granted, the shooting's not great, right? Like we talk about all the time. If you want to play a great game in that vein, you play tomb Raider. If you want quippy dialogue and and character development and character interaction, right? You play uncharted, right? That that's, that's where we kind of drew the line at that point. But, uh, you know, horizon is another amazing franchise for playstation it just i just feel like that franchise never gets the love it deserves because it always comes out like the i mean remember the first game came out three days before breath of the wild yeah and then the second one came out three days before elden ring so it just never got the love that it deserved and i feel really bad but like i think aloy is a cool character i think that world is cool i think the story they're telling is awesome. So like, yeah, PlayStation has some great franchises too. Uh, 
in in but for me like i i'm really with my limited time to play games and uh you know really trying to make a great nintendo show my commitment to nintendo takes priority over these other experiences uh and you know sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad you know like i i've already committed to playing hogwarts legacy on the switch when it comes out you know and that's clearly not going to be the way to play the game you know i'm sorry it's it's just not i feel like obviously the xbox and playstation versions are going to be top tier great texture work uh you know 60 frames uh really cool particle effects with the spells that kind of thing that you're just not going to get on the switch and Mm -hmm. you know that's that sometimes you're just gonna have to take that right but like there are great experiences on those consoles that you can also play on the switch as well like doom right i played through doom 2016 on the switch it was a fun experience it was a great experience not the top not the best experience but it's a great version of that game right and wolfenstein 2 i played through on the switch there's something really interesting about wolfenstein 2 on the switch because like that game takes place in the 1960s right yeah on in handheld mode like that game looks kind of grainy and kind of fuzzy but in a weird way it adds to the atmosphere because of the time period that game takes place Mm mm-hmm and so, like, the graininess and kind of the muddy textures of some of the environments and, you know, just the way the game looks kind of adds to that game a little bit in a weird way. And I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, oh, what about you, Ed? I know I've been talking for a little bit. I, I want to know what you think about playing on other consoles because well, I know we kind of have similar takes but i want to hear what you have to say so i i do enjoy playing on other consoles and i think it's definitely because with nintendo games i don't get the stories that i'm getting like with the last guardian or uh uh tell me why like uh like those kind of games that uh these modern games that i'm playing on but even during like the ps2 and ps3 days it's just like i was getting games on these consoles that Nintendo wouldn't do because Nintendo of course they had you know for from a first party stance they had this um we'll give you action and we'll give you comedy and we'll give you family stuff but we don't want to make it too dark because that would scare off the player base. We we go give you these stories but be creative and focus on our gameplay. And when you have something like um uh, uh, Shadow of the Colossus. When you have games like I don't know, even though Okami did come to Switch, um, Okami was something on PlayStation that no one ever attempted with that art style, and of course it was a Zelda-ish uh, kind of game, uh, the adventure game design, but no one had did anything like that, and I was getting that fix on PlayStation 2. With PlayStation 3, I was getting games like Infamous and Infamous 2. Um, I was getting games like um, um, uh, stuff from Ninja Theory and everything, and then like, I skipped the whole 360 generation because of that controller, but then when I got to Xbox One, I was like going back playing the Gears franchise, you know, like being committed to that, playing Forza, uh, playing uh, Saints Row. No, I did Saints Row 3 on PlayStation 3, but playing some stuff that I miss on Xbox 360, playing right on Xbox One. There was a lot of games on that console and stories that I just didn't get from Nintendo. Now, granted, there's a lot of mature stuff on there because, um, that was a lot that was pretty much on the system that they was offering but I was going in for the narrative I was going in for the creative uh, design that they had in her thing. and it was just like I'm not getting the stuff on Nintendo on first person I'm, there's indie games us on there that I that's not on the console that's on Xbox and Playstation so I'm gonna go and pick it up there and stuff um so I do enjoy it, and and at at the time I was of course, 
I was making it, enjoying it for myself. Then I was uh, doing it for for some games, for concert reasons and writing and everything. But now I could I I have a balance where I could do it if I feel like I need to play this game for a project or be able to talk about it on the podcast. I can. But other times I'll be like, yeah, I'm not gonna play Nintendo today. I'm gonna focus on Xbox or PlayStation and everything. Again, get, get something out of there. I have a big library for all three consoles in my past consoles. I have a big library because there's just so many games um, that's offering and that's going to challenge me. That's going to help me develop my skill and everything. And when I personally play a lot of the games, I was talking about Fire Team uh, Aliens, uh, Aliens Fire Team Elite. Yeah. I would get kicked out at times, but when I'm with the computer and AI and we're blowing up aliens, it's a fun ride. When I play, when I played through Gears Five, I was amazed. I I literally was amazed on they're finally telling a story that makes sense, and this game <laughs> looks beautiful because they were because they were just like if you look at Gear, I, I get on Gears Four because they they kind of did it wrong where yes uh kate is supposed to be the main focus um but they made it still about you know phoenix and jd and everything and it's just like when all of that stuff was happening it became like okay we're gonna focus on your relationship and really forget about his uh kate's mom till we get to the end of the game mm. and it was just like you lost you lost me with the purpose that uh, storytelling that she was trying to go mm-hmm. with. So when they did uh, Gears Five, they had a, a more focused story mm-hmm. and everything. It felt like, like uh, Gears Four in a way. Like I always hear this comparison, and the more and more I, I've thought about it over the years, the more and more I agree with it. Is that it? It's it was, it was the Force Awakens the star Wars force awakens to the gears franchise, right? Where like Mm -hmm. they're trying to introduce you to this new squad of characters, but they have the old guard in there, right. To have some sort of sense of familiarity. And they're trying to tell the story that is different enough, but also safe enough for you to understand. Right. And it's like, I, I get it, but also like, I, I do wish we could have seen something a little bit different uh but i think obviously the twist at the end of gears 4 leads to the story of gears 5 yeah and like you know when i wrote the review for gears 5 like oh gosh i don't know at this point uh i said it was you know obviously playstation is known for their you know people like them for their single player stories and my review was this is a large step in that direction. Yeah. Uh, is it quite where PlayStation's first party storytelling is? Not quite, but it's getting there. And I've, I thought, you know, the coalition has released three banger titles. Yes. Since forming, right? Like gears Four, gears five gears tactics. Do I want to see them explore something different than gears? Yes, please. I want to see something new from the coalition, but I also want to see how the gears wraps up, you know, like, you know for and gears is a really important franchise for microsoft like i would argue yeah. it's their best franchise right now you know i mean obviously halo is always going to be like the t- the tip of the pyramid but like halo has you know since 343 halo's really struggled to find an audience you know whether like i really liked halo 4 halo 5 super fun to play don't really know what happened in the game and halo infinite is like You know, it came out swinging and the story was good and the campaign was fun and the multiplayer was great, but like they stumbled out of the gate, right? With a roadmap, Mm -hmm. with no roadmap. And obviously they're going through their campaign co op stuff right now and Forge is late. Like they they just should have delayed it another year. Uh, But, you know, and in my honest opinion, like besides Forza, I think Gears is. Xbox's best franchise by far right now. Yeah. And uh the story they told in 5 was one of the best that Xbox has I, to I, offer. What I like at the story about Gears 5 um that I enjoyed because 
in in the sense that it doesn't do what Sony does, where Sony likes to draw out. Sometimes they draw out their story too long. And well, that, that was our criticism with Uncharted Four, right? It's like that mm-hmm. game was what about seventeen or eighteen hours when it could have been ten, you know? Yeah. Uh, and you know, I think that was the criticism with The Last of Us Part Two is like it was just way too long, and the last act of that game could have been its own game. Uh, you know, and you know, I didn't play it, so I don't really know. But uh, and God of War for me was too long. You know, Horizon, like, I know you can mainline that game pretty easily, and it's an open world game, so it's going to be longer, but, like, I put 65 hours into that game, and that game was really long, you know? So, I I don't know. I've been kind of ready for shorter experiences at this point. Uh, I I, I think I'm I'm ready for... I like the concise... Concise. I don't like when it's oh we're gonna give you we're gonna throw you in the past and then give you another past and then we'll throw you in the present but you got to redo everything you did in the front and it's just like you're doing too much to show me instead of just telling me a complete story because I'm as an adult I'm able to handle your narrative I just don't need you to draw it out to make this game longer because it now it feels like. You drew this game out to make up for the delays that you have in mm-hmm. the, in the game. Now, that that works for some people, but it's just like I want something to be precise when you do it. Now, that is a, that's that sounds more as a gripe, but those are the kind of games that I encounter when I'm playing on PlayStation and I'm playing on Xbox, and that's more of a first party thing. But you know, I, I enjoy like games like Papa and Yo and everything that they're tackle, tackling alcoholism. Rhyme I played on PlayStation, which deals with uh, which deals with kind. Of, I don't want to ruin it, but it deals with a, a very sensitive topic that deals with kid with a child, and it's just like. Yeah, it is an adventure game, but there's so much more to it. And when I can't find those things on a Nintendo platform, I can find it somewhere else. And I think that's what I enjoy about multi-platform gaming sometimes, when if I don't have the option to play it on one system, I can go to another system and play and stuff and get something out of it. Because, I, there, yes, I love getting playing games for fun laughing, having a great time, discussing. But when I could get something out of them and sometimes feel passionate about them um, and really try to sometimes get people to try it out and get these experiences and everything, it is something that I definitely enjoy. And Microsoft and Sony, on their platforms, they offer that. And that's what I... That's what I love about them. I'm going to always go to Nintendo. I'm always going to support Nintendo in that way because they often, like, Sony and Microsoft can't write, like, do a Paper Mario game or Mm -hmm. do a Yoshi game or do anything artistic style out of their creative, uh, you know, when they're making the games because they've they've tried. And then, you know, like, you know, with with Little Big Planet and Tearaway Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, na- you know, uh, 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 what was that? What was that game called? Concrete, uh, Concrete Genie. Concrete Genie, and uh, you know, now with with uh, Dreams, like they've tried their artistic stuff, and like, I mean, we kind of talk about too is like PlayStation Three entering PlayStation Four, entering the PlayStation Four era, was like top tier creative Sony because they were taking risks. They were doing interesting things, right? Like Resogun was like <laughs> an amazing launch game. Dude, that was uh, that was the game to have a, was it PlayStation 4? Yeah. Yeah, that was the uh, outside of Killzone, Resogun was the game mm-hmm. people were just like, you need a PlayStation 4 for. Yeah, and it was free. That like that that whole like first year, like Resogun was free with PlayStation Plus. Which was amazing, uh, and like you know, with with you know, obviously, Flow, Flower, and Journey, uh, people really enjoy those games. Like Sony was doing uh, some interesting stuff. Unfinished Swan was one. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, everybody's gone to the Rapture was theirs for a while. Like Sony really did some interesting 
things with indies and smaller creative titles and first, you know, smaller first party titles, obviously. And like, they just got away from that. And, uh, I think, you know, where the Vita left off is where the switch picked up and ran with the indie stuff, right? Like Mm -hmm. that became, you know, just something that the switch has been very good at curating and being able to find cool games, right? Like we talk about Blossom Tales is getting a sequel and the only reason why they're getting a sequel is because their switch sales were so high that they saved the company, right? Yeah. And that's amazing. That's an amazing story. And I mean, it's sad that (laughs) that's what it had to come to, to save the company, but like, that's an amazing story that they're able to make a sequel to this game because the switch allowed them to have a platform where the game was popular. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we talk about Shovel Knight and how they chose the Wii U to be their premier platform. Smart decision? Probably not, <laughs> right? Like, the Wii U hadn't sold a lot. Indie games weren't, you know, doing great on the Wii U. Uh, Shovel Knight came to 3DS also, obviously. But, like, you know, Shovel Knight sold, has sold, what, 7 or 8 million units at this point, I think they said? Yeah. Maybe it was 5. I don't know. Somewhere in that range. seven, five to 7 million units. And, like... Shovel Knight is one of the greatest indie platformers I've ever played. Like, I love Shovel Knight. Yeah. Uh, and still to this very day, people talk about, still about, talk about Shovel Knight. Yeah. And I know they got really cool, unique levels on Xbox, right? They had the Battletoads level, and uh, I think the PlayStation had a God of War level. Yeah, it uh, did. But, you know, like, it. it's just... I, I don't know, man. I, I think the other platforms are doing some cool things. And, like, Xbox has kind of taken over the indie mantle for a while with Game Pass now and ID at Xbox. Mm-hmm. They're really doing a great job of curating indie titles because of Game Pass. Uh, Tunic, Death's Door, uh, I think Dead Cells, uh, Inside. Like, they've, they've been doing a great job of really curating a nice selection of indies. <laughs> And those businesses are smart to put Turtles. it on Game Pass. Turtles, yeah. They, they're they smart to put it on Game Pass to get that community and that crowd into it. But they know that if we put this on Switch, we're going to make our profit from there. So as a business thing, mm-hmm. that's good for them. Mm-hmm. You know, to well, you look get... at you look at Ninja Turtles and like you look at the sales numbers of that. They announced they sold over a million units in the first week, which is amazing. Yeah. But you know none of those the purchases were on Xbox, right? Well, of course. They were on Switch. Like, probably two-thirds of them were on Switch. And, you know, PlayStation, I'm sure maybe, like, 5% of those were on Xbox because of Game Pass. Yeah, Not- and they probably... And we don't even know for from all the limited run pre-orders that they did for that game for physical. Yeah, like they that's probably adding more to... That's why they're going to add more to their... Uh, to that number mm-hmm. like a million sales yeah i mean ninja turtles is a big ip right i mean i knew yeah. that game was going to do well uh i bet it's i bet it hits close to two and a half million by the end of the year but and and the thing is too is like that game is super fo- affordable i think it's only 20 or 25 bucks uh yeah know? and so yeah i don't know i just I like playing on all consoles. I definitely have games that I prefer playing on Xbox over the Switch. Uh but I just I just I love the Switch a lot and I know like I know we get a lot of crap for that, you know, and I know that you get more crap than anybody about it, but uh I don't care, you know. I I just I don't care. This is where I want to play my games, right? Like Death's Door is available on Xbox. I I bought it on Xbox and I turned around and bought it on Switch because I'm like, no, I want to play it here. I want to play it where I want to play it. And, uh, you know. Well, and and getting to the last question before we get to question block in, in, in the show, it's kind of just, I don't think we're going to go back to a one console generation where, where we're in. I think if you're able to own um you know multiple consoles uh you know if you're able to afford it you have those options to get it and play the games that's going to be on there mm-hmm. you know i i don't think there's going to be yes there's i think there's going to be some exclusive games or 
certain games that may make you buy the system so you can start that library of gaming. But I don't think we're in a generation where we're going to go back to um, one console. Because I, to me personally, I feel like no console is better than any other console. Your li- that console library is that console's library. You're going to go support it and have fun with it. Or you're going to at least be at a level to respect what they offer. Um, you know, if, if you want to, if you feel like that you only can afford to one console, then go to the one that's going to give you the best options. Yeah, you might not be able to play other games, but you may have a friend who have that other console, and you guys maybe go, you guys or gals, uh, <laughs> may go there and gang together. You know, there's, I think we're in an age where there's so many options. Uh, to play games and uh, be able to obtain them, that I just don't think we'll ever go back to a one generation console. Each of these companies do something different and unique uh, that's going to provide the fun. And at this point in time, we're we talked on expansion pass, Corey. What is Nintendo's next console going to look like? What is their next move? And we and a lot of people have said, just like like you said, they can't go back to doing a generational or traditional console anymore. Mm-hmm. The Switch has set the standard of gaming for just for, maybe just for Nintendo. And now they have to expand on that. Yeah. And like how do you expand on this? Like besides like making besides making a more powerful version of what this console is, which is why yeah. I think, you know, it's why I think whatever is the successor to the Switch is literally just going to be like a the same type of device, but with you know be- like more powerful insides, maybe a dock that produces you know has some processing power in it to make it run at 4K on your TV or whatever. But like they can't <laughs> they can't go back. And I know we've had that conversation a ton, and we're not going to have it here now. But like. Mm. I just I just don't understand what happens to the Switch when their next console comes out. The only thing is is like it has to be a console handheld hybrid. It has to be backwards compatible, right? It, yes. Because they've been pushing this digital library stuff so much and like to be fair, Nintendo's usually been pretty good about backwards compatibility at least one generation behind, right? Like the Wii yeah. was backwards compatible with the GameCube. The Wii U was backwards compatible with the Wii. I mean, the Switch, I guess you could count the ports as backwards compatible with the Wii U. But uh, No, I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? Like, There's definitely a precedent there. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I love the Switch. I hope, I, I don't. I don't I'm not ready for them to move on from the Switch. I Me just neither. I just want it to be more powerful to where we can start handling some of these third party games, maybe see Zelda <laughs> at a higher frame rate than like mid twenties. Uh <laughs> you know. That like I mean, seriously, that's kinda all I want. I don't need a lot from Nintendo, right? Like I don't. Maybe a better looking store, <laughs> maybe with some music. <laughs> uh maybe a store where I can scroll down past the third page and maybe, you know, load the games in before I get there. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't need much. I just like, I don't even like, I know people are mad that there's not even themes on the switch. I don't care. I just, I just want to switch. That's a little bit more powerful, you know, maybe one without joy cons <laughs> that docks. And, and, uh, and, 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 I just want to say this. Uh, I know I've been getting on the Steam Deck and everything. And the reason I, I've been getting on the Steam Deck is that it was just a response of what people were illegally going to do on that system. Now that a lot of people have it, it's it, the conversation is up and down. Mm-hmm. And up and down in the sense that people enjoy it. They're showing off the games. They love it playing Microsoft games, Sony games, whatever. Um, But, like, it's still, for a lot of people, uh, the total talk about Nintendo. 
and everything. And I think it's because people are still waiting to get their Steam Deck. Um, it, it's just recently that people are showing it off and talking about how they enjoy the system. But the conversation falls apart at times. And, you know, uh, and if people feel like that the Steam Deck is going to give them that enjoyment of gaming, that's awesome, in my opinion. The Steam Deck offers something that, that Nintendo don't offer or anything. And, like, if you are about the tech spec, hey, maybe that the Steam Deck does a lot different uh, or a lot better than the Switch. But it's still that it's still something that people should be able to play and enjoy and everything. Oh, yeah. They feel like that's their style of game. Yeah. You know. Uh, Corey, any last words before we get into question box? No, I just, uh, you know, play what you love, love what you play, and play where you want to play it. I mean, that's, you know. Yes. That's kind of it. Well, Corey, it's time for question block. Ooh. Uh, uh, so we we already answered uh, Grayson's question right at the top. So yes. we have one more question to, to answer at this time. It is uh, our friend Jack, uh, Jack Brow uh, from the Boss Rush t- writing team. He asks, have either of you imported any off-brand accessories for nintendo consoles i had this gba to tv adapter before the gamecube Game Boy player so uh, for she jack no and the reason why is that i didn't know how to do import shopping mm-hmm. um i used to read about it at egm i used to hear it on different podcasts and everything but uh i i at a point in time, I wasn't buying games uh, for myself. My parents had to really do it. Like I, my first console that I ever bought was a drink ass, and I was in high school. And the only reason I was able to get one of those is not because it was cheap, uh, was because I was DJing that basketball game. <laughs> wow! And so and, until I got my first job, like I, you know. When I, you know, I had a PlayStation One at that time, um, but it was just like, you know, being able to buy Resident Evil also. But like when I first started to buy my own consoles and and stuff like that, importing stuff just never came to my mind. And it was just like, I don't know if this stuff is going to work because my thought was region lot. You know, games from from out of uh, out of uh, the USA wouldn't work on my system, so I was thinking that uh, the accessories that if they were some that I could import wouldn't work on my console. So I just never imported any. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> I've never really imported anything either. <laughs> I mean, the closest thing I guess would be like a crappy Mad Cat's controller that my parents. Got. Oh goodness. Uh, I mean that that's just a joke. I've never imported anything. I, so my thing was always like if it's not first party or made by the company, like I'm not getting it. You know, even yeah. if it's like a quote unquote licensed product. You know, uh, I had enough third party kind of you know the dumb turbo controllers for Genesis and super nintendo or the n64 mad cats controllers that were clear and lit up inside and then broke 10 minutes later i just i just never got anything that was third party you know if if it wasn't made by nintendo i wasn't buying it and uh not that i really knew about importing or buying import games or whatever at the time anyway but like even if i could i don't know if i would have you know uh so no importing for me beware of mad cat's controller <laughs> god like i don't I, even I, like i don't even want to buy those like power a controllers for the switch right like even though some of them look kind of cool you know like there's a really yeah. cool metroid dread one there was a cool zelda one that came out uh but like I just don't I just can't I can't I I think if I ever it were able to import something I would love to import the Panasonic uh, DVD GameCube oh no 
I, I know. Okay, I, I will say this. I know a lot of people don't care for it and stuff, but I do like that design. And I do like the lighting and stuff on it. Like, it looks like a toaster. It, 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 it looks so like ugly. a mailbox. <laughs> no, it looks like a 1980s, like, space toaster. Like, what they thought, <laughs> like if you were going to toast bread in space, this is what it looks like. Yeah, so, I mean, but that would be, like, the only thing that I would, if I was able to import, I would get that. Uh, and, yeah, play GameCube you games and watch DVDs, I guess. But I like that little blue clock that they, or not clock, or screen that they had in the middle of it uh, that you could see. It was just something cool and different, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but that would probably be the only thing. Because I'm like, I don't really play a lot of fighters so importing like a fight a fight stick you know that wouldn't do nothing for me yeah yeah i mean i guess i guess fight sticks are a little bit different though you know because like I, I, fight sticks are like uh, people want that arcade feeling right and so mm-hmm. i like i always felt like arcade sticks were just some different than a than a standard third party controller right it's they're more aimed at that and like you can always go online and some fgc communities or websites and stuff and they'll tell you they'll recommend ones to you that like oh these are the ones that the pros use or these are the ones that people in the evo use and you know you can kind of steer yourself away from the garbage ones by doing a little Mm. bit of research right but there so i've always kind of viewed those as like you know, that's a different kind of aspect to gaming that I still don't understand. Uh, but that's because I'm not a fighting game person. Yeah. So, well, Corey, I think that's going to be it for Nintendo Power Block. I know, a uh, short one tonight, only two hours. Yeah, we are some tired boys. We oh have worked. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine, uh, though. This was, I mean,. Look, we set out to, and said that, you know, we were going to make the show that we wanted to make after 300, right? Whether it was, uh, you know, 45 minutes or three hours, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, this wasn't a busy week. It was just the two of us. And here we are, two hours. It's, it's fine. Plus, we started late, you know, so it was fine. Yes. Uh, well, Corey, where can we find you? You can find me. On the internet at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on the Boss Rush Podcast, Standard Definition, and plenty of other things here on the Boss Rush Network. Yes, you guys can find me on Twitter at that Retro Code and on Instagram. You can check me out also on Discord. You can find me on Nintendo Power Block Live on Mondays. Uh, we have our recorded show in audio on Wednesdays. And check out Nintendo Expansion Pass. Uh, that el- episodes go up on Sundays. But if you want it earlier, you just gotta become a Patreon uh, supporter. Or, you know, for five, five, for five dollars, you can be a Patreon producer. Um, you can check some of my old work on uh Oh, SoundCloud for optional opinion and, and check out watchfish.net for our writings, news stories, and more. With that, everybody, have a great week, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time on Nintendo Pop Block. Bye, everybody. Woohoo! Bye.